I'm here with Dave, KZ9V, and he's got a little surprise for us in his cigar box. It's not and cigars. Not cigars, which is, oh, do anybody smoke cigars anymore? <laughs> I know, yeah. I know a couple people. <laughs> Does anybody sell cigar boxes anymore? That is a good question. It yeah. is a really good question. I like search, I like watching for those at uh, rummage sales. Yeah, um, estate, estate, estate sales, sales. And, and whatnot because they're they're pretty they're pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's not cigars, but it's one of these. Uh, this is the uh, TRU SDX. Uh, very small, a uh, very inexpensive uh, SDR transceiver. Yeah, HF. Yeah. HF transceiver. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's four different bands, I think. Five. Uh, five bands. Yeah. Uh, Forty through, what is it? Eighty through twenty meters, and then I think you yeah. Can get uh, yeah. The standard one is eighty through twenty. Yeah. And then there are a couple other variations. The couple classic of, and the high band. A couple of different mods you can get mm -hmm. for it, and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, really good on CW. Puts up. You can get up almost five watts out of this thing. Uh, more than five. Watts. More than four, five watts. If you're brave. If you're brave. Yeah. Depending on how much <laughs> power you've you've, you've 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 looked at these pretty well, and it's um, um you don't want to run them five watts too long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you, or you can run them with a, just a USB jack, and they're like 500 milliwatts. So yep. um, ultra ultra QRP uh, little little radio. A lot yeah. of fun to play with, but. Yeah. Um, so what happened is Michael bought one. Yes. And then of course I, I was green with envy, so I had to buy one too. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference between his mm -hmm. and the secret one that's in the box here is that mine has been used a lot. <laughs> his has yet to be turned on. I turned it on because <laughs> I see I, I did make the power cable for it. <laughs> yeah. But I have not had a chance to really get out on, on the air with it. Yeah. So. Well, what's amazing is uh, uh, there's another guy that does YouTubes and uh, YouTube videos, and he demonstrated one of these. And uh, he made a comment: "There's a difference between a tool and a toy." Mm -hmm. And this thing in its orange plastic box for a hundred dollars or hundred and fifty dollars, whatever it is, sometimes people think, "Well, that's a toy." Yeah, it is not a toy. I can honestly tell you that that box is a tool. And it's really handy. It has uh, applications for parks on the air is endless because the thing is so bloody small. Its current consumption is less than an amp. It's like a half of an amp. So your battery lasts all week. Yeah. And uh, five bands. And as Michael says, it's great for CW, but it is just gangbusters. FT8. And honestly, God, I've made DX contacts sideband. There you go. With nothing but the built-in microphone on the front. This is a serious transceiver. It's it's built on a on a on a platform that actually, you know, you could use to, you know, make contacts with, do oh, anything, that's awesome. yeah, do anything. I, I take so, it all the time. Yeah. So so what I did was uh, I used mine so often that I thought, you know, I could fit an entire station in a cigar box. There you go. Okay, here it is. So we're going to open this thing up. So how heavy do you think this is? This, about a pound. pound. About a pound. About a pound. You've heard of the one pound challenge? So Yeah. Yeah, this is truly yeah. the one pound challenge. And, and this is literally everything that you need to, to do a Parks on the Air activation, except the antenna. It's all there. And we could probably squeeze one in there. No, you couldn't. <laughs> Oh, we could get one in Look there. Look at that. We could get something in there. Oh, my. <laughs> now, obviously, there's a radio in there. So we, we can start with that. I'll pull mine out. And the first thing you'll notice is that my toy, which is not a toy, my tool is different color than Michael's. Mm -hmm. And that's because I coughed up the 25 or 30 bucks for the anodized aluminum shell. So it, I mean, this, this looks, this looks amazing. It is. I mean, this, the, the, it's got the same lettering and everything on there, but, yep. but, uh, and then on the back, I've got my uh, secret serial number. Well, I won't share that with anybody, but, but yeah, this is, and it, there it is. You've seen these on other videos and it is not a toy. Nope. Absolutely. Okay. So what do we need to make this, this guy work? Well, uh, let's start with a key. Okay. You guys have maybe seen this key before. It was 3D printed, most of it. I modified it with the wooden paddles, and, and they look really cool. Yeah. But fits in the cigar box, so there you go. And uh, when you're doing 
uh, CW, if you're uh, lazy or you need a little assistance, you need uh, memories. And this has one memory for sending CQ, which is great. But I put my little Pico keyer in here. And this is a little kit that you can build for about 50 bucks. It has four memories. And I use one for calling CQ. I use one for the little 73 message at the end of the contact. I have one with just my call sign so that if I'm hunting, I can just push a button and it sends my call sign. And I even have one with a, a, a generic signal report on it. So that's a so, nice little convenience feature you added to the, to the kit. Yeah, so. yeah. And I use it all the time. Not because I'm lazy, but it makes my sending really good and it frees up my uh, time so that I can do logging or take a sip, uh, you know, have a drink or something. Yep, yep. And uh, it's really, really cool. Okay, so you need that. And then <clears throat> this is just uh, simple earbuds, head, you know, plugged in. It has a volume control on it. So that's what I use instead of uh, headphones. It, the my uh, dollar store earbuds dollar store i think they were free on delta airlines <laughs> <laughs> the spiel, the built-in speaker everybody knows is a little suspect it'll work in an emergency but the earbuds is much much better mm -hmm. okay the rf output jack on this guy is a little sma connector and uh, so what i use is a cable that actually comes with an sma uh, connector on one end and an SO239 on the other. And so I can plug any antenna yep. coax cable directly into it. Mine, that. I've got an SMA to B and C sort yeah. of direct fit on there. Yes. Yeah. So. And in fact, the radio comes, the transceiver comes with that adapter. With that adapter. Yeah. So I, I just don't use the adapter. Instead, I, I use go this to the, cable. Go to the UHF. Yeah. And it's a couple feet long. All right. Then for power. I don't carry a great big uh, battery pack. You don't need it. This thing draws like a half an amp in the tr full power transmit mode. And um, I discovered when I first got it and I plugged it into my uh, LiPo, LifePo 4 batteries, 13.7 volts is, the radio will accept anything up to 16, but the problem is that the higher the supply voltage, the higher the RF output will be. And I discovered pretty quickly that on 20 meters, that 13.7 volt battery put out almost eight watts. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds great. Wow, I got a hot radio. This puppy really puts out. The problem is that eight watts puts the transistors, those little bitty uh, BS170 transistors, right on the line of potentially overheating. It is a really a hot radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I recommend, and, and others have said the same, 13.7 uh, is too much voltage. Because they, there's no heat sinks on those transistors. No, yeah. no, no. So, so what a lot of people use is, and I'll take it out of the plastic bag. I put it in a little baggie here just for insulation purposes so I don't get a short circuit and light my cigar box on fire. But these are just, uh, it's a, a pack with three of these 18650 cells. They're lithium ion batteries. They're very inexpensive. Obviously they're rechargeable. And the clip pack is made for four batteries. I don't want four because they're 3.7 volts per cell. So if you do the math, you come up with just about the perfect voltage with three cells. And then I use the empty slot to put an inline fuse. I'm a, I'm a big safety guy, so even though we're talking about very low current, it's always nice, safe to good, have it. Good fuse. to have, always have it fused. Yep. So there's the, there's the power pack. So then we have the cables, and uh, I use a little bitty short one here to connect my keyer to the memory mm -hmm. box. Got a little bit longer one here to connect the, the uh, memory box. To the radio and that just plugs in right there with a mic key slot then i have a homebrew uh, cable that i made up now this this kind of replaces what a lot of people use their digikey for yes okay it's the interface between their computer and and the box if they want to run fta or any digital mode you need some kind of an interface okay 
I MacGyvered this guy up so what the, what I have is just the standard jack to go into the PC. Yep. It's a, a four conductor jack. And everybody's PC is a little different, but that's what mine needs. And on the other end, it's one one is a microphone input, and that has audio coming from the laptop to the radio. And the other one is uh, goes into the speaker jack, and that takes audio from the radio to the computer. So I'm not using the USB jack. I'm not using a DigiKey. I'm not using any external devices. It's just audio going back and forth. You're using the sound card in your in your laptop. Yes. Yep. So yes. this connects to the so the audio port in your laptop is the, uh, the sound card, and then this is just a switching interface. Yeah, and what this is behind the uh, shrink wrap is two capacitors. I use a I use a DC blocking capacitors for the link in both directions. I'm, it's, again, it's just a safety thing, uh, and, and it also prevents some DC it current get, flowing in that it you gets don't rid of, want. It'll get rid of your hum. And ground loops. Yep, yep, get rid yeah. of the ground loop. So there's two uh, capacitors in there, and there's a, a resistor that decreases the level of the audio coming from the laptop going into the microphone input on the radio because it's, it's a little too hot. So, mm -hmm. I, so I put a 5K resistor in series. So that probably more than you wanted to know, but that's what. <laughs> and then this is the other cable that I homebrewed. This is the adapter cable if you want to use an external headset, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, I feel a little bit silly when I'm running sideband and I'm going CQ, 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 you know, talking into a metal. People think you're a little goofy. Yeah. So so this plugs right into the the mic key jack. And then your headset uh, plug plugs into one and then there's a push to talk switch so you, you know you have whatever whatever foot switch or whatever, whatever foot switch whatever you're using, yeah. Yeah, so then you have your, your headset with your boom mic, and you look professional, and you're using not a toy, this is a tool, right? Mm -hmm. And there you go. And uh, <clears throat> you're set, that battery will last all day. And then and, some. And then some. And I use this thing, I would say in the last year, I use this almost 50% of the time on my Parks on the Air activations. It's, it's crazy. And uh, it's, you know, I, I like CW. It works really, really good on CW. The filter, the adjustable filters, we could go through the, the menu settings in here are very straightforward. It's very easy to use, even though there are only like three controls on there. It's super, super mm -hmm. sweet. And you can put that thing in a cigar box. I take it on the airplanes. The TSA guys don't even blink when they see these little batteries. They think you got your vape in there. <laughs> yeah, I look like a vapor. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and, and when you're done, everything goes back in the cigar box, and and away you go. All right, I love it. It's and, it's I, I can't speak highly enough for the guys that 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 dream this up, and are able to manufacture and and sell them for. Uh, I think you got yours for a hundred bucks. Was it, yeah, it was I bought it on Prime Day, so it was like a hundred dollars. They retail usually around a hundred thirty, a hundred forty. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I, you know, and I think back to the '70s when I was a novice, and, and the radios that we paid, we paid uh, for I said 650 bucks for the Asu. But when I started as a novice, I had a Heath kit that I built, and a, and I had like three or four hundred dollars tied up. And when you do the inflation calculation, that's you multiply by six, you know, we're getting to the three four thousand dollars of today's money, and and there's more power in this little tiny box than in those radios that we you know, paid yep. dearly for yep. back yep. in the 70s. Well, Dave, uh, thanks a lot for sharing this. We'll put links to um, the TRU SDX and some of these other things down in the video description if you want to learn more about uh, these amazing little transceivers. Uh, get one yourself, that's great. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, also, some of the other videos that this stuff has appeared in, especially that antenna. So, uh, questions, comments, you can leave them down below. Uh, thanks for joining me, Dave. I'm uh, Michael, KB9VBR. KZ9V. Yeah, it's uh, you have a great day in 7-3.